Hell's Angels and the Outlaws are two one of the most notorious biker gangs in the world. Not only are these one percenters dangerous to society, but they have also been locked in a bloody war for the better part of six decades. But it now seems that things are starting to settle down. The war between the Hell's Angels and the Outlaws is best understood by going back to the origins of the conflict. A group of World War II veterans in California who shared a passion for motorcycling and risk-taking established the Hells Angels in 1948. The gang grew over time and branched out into further illegal enterprises, including drug trafficking, extortion, and prostitution. The Hells Angels were among the most influential criminal gangs in the United States by the 1960s. In contrast, the Outlaws were established in Illinois by 1959 by a group of pissed-off bastards of Bloomington members who were unhappy with the group's direction. Similar to the Hells Angels, the Outlaws experienced rapid expansion that saw the formation of chapters across the United States, Canada, and Europe. The Hells Angels and the Outlaws didn't really talk to each other for the first few years of each group's existence since they were too busy with their own illegal activities. However, conflicts flared out to the 1970s as the two factions struggled for dominance in the Midwest drug trade. Sonny Barger, the legendary head of the Hells Angels, was a major fact in this dispute. Barger was a dynamic leader who had worked his way up through the gang's ranks and he was extremely devoted to his comrades. He believed the outlaws threatened the Hells Angels position as the preeminent criminal organization and he set out to eliminate them. In response, the outlaws established chapters in Hell's Angels territory and began aggressively expanding their operation, often leading to violent clashes between the two groups. The animosity between the two factions has worsened over the years with violence and death occurring on both sides. In 1984, a gang of outlaws ambushed and killed four members of the Hell's Angels outside a club of Connecticut in what became known as the most notorious instances of this battle. The incident set off a chain reaction of violence between the two factions with retaliation attacks on both sides contributing to a rise in the body count. Join the fight between the Hell's Angels and the Outlaws. Territorial issues are a major cause of friction between the two groups. The Hell's Angels and the Outlaws are two rival motorcycle gangs who engage in a wide variety of criminal activities and in many instances they have territorial, resource, and profit disputes since their illicit activities overlap. Ideological differences are another factor that contribute to the unrest between the two factions. Although the Hells Angels and the Outlaws are both motorcycle gangs with a strong dedication to the outlaw culture, their organizational structures and cultural beliefs are quite different from one another. For instance, the Hells Angels are well known for their rigorous hierarchical structure, centralized leadership and regulations and standards of conduct that all members must adhere to. In contrast, the Outlaws are a more decentralized organization in which the local chapters enjoy more freedom and independence. Organizationally distinct subcultures within the Outlaw motorcycling community have tangled for power and control. There is mutual hostility between the Hells Angels and the Outlaws because both groups perceive themselves to be the dominant force in the subculture. While the Hells Angels and the Outlaws are quite different organizations, they are united in their dedication to the Outlaw biker lifestyle. They both have a strong sense of solidarity and camaraderie between themselves because of their shared identity as outcasts and rebels. The strength of the Hells Angels' bonds of brotherhood and dedication to one another is crucial to their success and their continuing conflict with the outlaws. Both sets of members are completely dedicated to their communities and will stop at nothing to protect their territory and reputation. Because of their loyalty to their groups, violence and retaliation have become endemic and showing no signs of abating. There has been no let-up in the violence between the Hells Angels and the Outlaws, with members of both factions having been murdered or injured in drive-by shootings, bombings, and other types of attacks. Law enforcement has increased its efforts in recent years to counter those of the Hells Angels and Outlaws. Several members of both gangs have been apprehended and brought to justice as a result of these efforts. Well, after countless losses and deaths on both sides, it seems that the conflict is really coming to a halt, or at least a ceasefire. Scott M. Bernstein of the Gangster Report claims that there have been recent rumors of a possible reconciliation between the two factions' senior leadership. According to reports, high-level representatives from both teams have been in talks since December. It appears that the Hells Angels and the Outlaws are also contemplating the idea that the enemy of my enemy is my friend, despite continuing concerns about the Pagans and Mongols' operations. Given the decades-long hostility between the two parties, this is really interesting information. There have been reports of a ceasefire or peace between the Outlaws and Hells Angels for over 50 years, although it seemed improbable at the time. There have been simmering tensions between the clubs in Michigan for some time, according to Scott M. Bernstein. Yet the FBI and court records he has access to indicate that the two factions had met to discuss a ceasefire, with negotiations heating up when the Hells Angels made their first visit to Michigan in 2019. 
The announcement of a possible truth between the Hells Angels and Outlaws has shocked lovers of motorcycle culture and the history of the one percenter world. For such a long time, these two clubs have been at each other's throats, and that reconciliation seems unlikely. It's likely that this ceasefire is merely temporary and a lull in the ongoing struggle between the two powerful parties. After all, the MC world's past is full of surprises, yet if the conversations go well, it might herald a fundamental shift in the dynamics of the MC world, which could have long-lasting effects. The Hells Angels have kept a presence in Michigan, but not in Detroit proper. But throughout the last four years, at least one or two Hells Angels chapters have emerged in Michigan. They have avoided this area since the outlaws in Detroit are so powerful throughout the state of Michigan. They also once called Detroit home for their global headquarters and the city still plays a significant role in the company's operations. According to reports, pagan and Mongol leaders met in Michigan, which led to the eventual arrival of Hells Angels. The powerful figures were going to stand by while the pagans and the Mongols ate up the land. Due to the state's long-standing status as Outlaws territory, the Hells Angels have never ventured there before. The Outlaws avoided visiting one of their worldwide transportation hubs, Detroit. They are either far to the north or to the west. A reaction to the Pagans and Mongols' actions were inevitable, and it had arrived. The other biker gang leaders couldn't stand by and watch while the Pagans and Mongols ate up territory all throughout the country. Add gasoline to the flames with a recent arrest of a man who was caught on wire discussing his role in selling weapons to the outlaws and Hell's Angels for a pending war in Michigan. Regardless of your stance, this is unquestionably good news. Sitting down and having conversation is usually a good idea. Despite their long-standing animosity with the Hell's Angels, Detroit's highwaymen and outlaws are now able to coexist peacefully. The highwaymen were supposedly approached by the Angels about forming an alliance, but the talks broke down. It remains to be seen, however, if the ceasefire will last, and this recent development is promising news. So that's all the time we had today, folks. We hope you enjoyed this video about the Hells Angels and the Outlaws. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to remain updated about all our future uploads and videos. We'll see you in the next video.